What will happen if someone takes someone's wealth or property through fraud or deceit? Were you present in the last class? Yes. Okay, tell me the answer. According to Ayah 30 of Surah Nisa, Allah will put that person in fire. Okay, and what will happen if you avoid great sins? According to Ayah 31 of Surah Nisa, Allah will expiate small sins and add and admit you to paradise. In case of disagreement on decision, who has authority to make the final decision? According to Ayah 34, husband has the authority to make the final decisions in the house and the wife must be obedient to him. Today we'll study from the book Sunan at tirmizi Hadith number 2332. Read this Hadith. Ms. Hoor or Ahmad, read this. Hans bin Malik narrated that Allah's Messenger said the Hoor shall not be established until time is constructed and the year is like a month a month is like a week and the week is like the day and the day is like the fire so it may be physically time may become fast or maybe the baraka in our time is taken out. So things that we do in one day near the day of judgment that we will have this little baraka. So we, no, sorry, the thing that we can do in one hour and near the day of judgment, maybe we take it one day to complete. Or maybe it physically becomes short. So time will tell us how will it happen. That's so no need to write any question from this or this. So just a thing is this that time will become fast near the day of judgment. Next student, Aisha Bibi. Assalamualaikum sir. Waalaikum salam. Read this one. Mujahid narrated that Ibn Umar said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa grabbed me on part of my body and said, be in the world like a stranger and a passerby and count yourself among the inhabitants of the grave. Ibn Umar said to me, when you wake up in the morning, then don't consider yourself with the evening and when you reach the evening then don't consider yourself with the morning take from your health before your weak illness and from your life before your death for indeed O slave of Allah you don't know what your description shall be tomorrow so this hadith tells us that we don't need first it tells us that we should treat ourselves as a stranger or passerby in this world. This means that we should not accumulate, try to accumulate too much wealth, properties. Just uh, earn or just take what is necessary for you. And do not save anything. Very much. And second thing, don't worry about the future. So here we better have this note. Is the Hadith number 
two, three, three, three. So here we write the question. What does the of these two three three tells you? What does the these two three 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 tells you? It tells us that we should not accumulate too much wealth and properties. Also, we should not worry about our future. I will repeat the answer. It tells us that we should not accumulate too much wealth or properties. And we should not think much about our future. Okay, Ummu Ahmed. Yes. Repeat the question and the answer. What does the Hadith 2 3 tells us, tells you? It tells us that we should not accumulate too much wealth and properties. Also, we should not worry about the future. Read this Hadith. Anas ibn Malik narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is the son of Adam and this is his lifespan. And he placed his hand at the height of the nape of his neck. Then he extended it higher and said, from there is what is hoped for. From there, there is what is hoped for. Sahih. There is a narration on this topic from Abu so, Sa'id. Basically, this one tells us that our desires are always higher than us, which means we can never fulfill our desire throughout our life. There will be always something that we want more. So here we will write, what does Hadith 2, 3, 3, 4 tells you? What does the Hadith 2, 3, 3, 4 tells you? It tells us that our desires are always more than our life. So nobody can fulfill all his desires. I will repeat the answer. It tells us that our desires are always higher than our life. So we can never fulfill all our desires. Ms. Hoor. Read the question and the answer. 
what does the hadith 2334 tells us it tells us that our desires are always more than our life so nobody can fulfill all our desires all his desires okay read the next one Abu, Abu As-Safar Sassar narrated that Abdullah bin Amr said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by while we were empiring a heart of ours. So he said, what is this? We said it has become weak, so we are Bearing it, he said, I do not think but that, that the matter of life is more inflicting than that. So, repelling a heart usually takes just one day. And life is more fitting than that. This means that our life is more fast than it, which means death can come to you anytime. So it means that you should not think much about your future, that I will do this thing in 10 years, this thing in 20 years. Your death can come any time to you. So always remember your death. No need to write uh, anything from this one. Next student is, uh, I think, just listening. So after that, we have... Ali Sheri Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. In this one. Uh, uh, Kab, Kab Ibrahim. He had narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Indeed, there is a fitna for every woman and a Fitna for my woman is, is wealth. wealth. Is wealth. Okay. Can anyone tell me what is fitna? Fitna is um uh something that is uh that we cannot uh, avoid. We can avoid fitna. Mm. Something is something we cannot avoid, but uh, we can manage it. We can avoid fitna as well. Uh, we cannot avoid it, but we can manage it if we are not uh, too upset. We can avoid fitna. This definition is not correct, brother. Anyone else who knows the definition yes. of fitna? No. Fitna is. Your microphone is muted. I say fitna is like temptation. Temptation, okay. What is fitna? In the answer, you will write fitna is a temptation or anything which makes you neglectful in your religion. Anything which can make you neglectful in your religion so that is the answer now i will explain the answer so any halal thing any good thing can also become fitna for you for example your worldly education can become fitna for you your job can become fitna for you your parents can become fitna for you your children can become fitna for you 
your wife can become fitna for you your friends can become fitna for you so anything which is halal or good thing good things can also become fitna for you can anyone tell me how can our education become fitna for us worldly education Ms. Hoard, any idea? Like when you are more educated, you feel like, like, like you have more education than anyone else. For example, if you are fasting and uh, if if it is the month of Ramadan and you need to fast, but the exams are in the similar month, same month. So during fasting, students often find it difficult to study and prepare for the exam. So many students I see, they don't fast. They miss their fasting of Ramadan only because of their exams. So in this example, their worldly education become a fitna for them. I will ask everything again. So listen carefully. So this is an example of education becoming fitna. Then we have job. If you are living in a non-Islamic country, sometime it will be difficult for you to pray salah like zor salah, asar salah just because of your job. So in that case, your job becomes fitna for you. Then we have parents. Sometimes parents will cause problem in your marriage. Muslim parents often do these things. So in that case, they will say that it's time for your education, complete your education, you get your job or house, stuff like this. So in that case, your parents have become fitna for you because they are stopping you from a halal thing. When they will stop you from a halal thing, then you will find it difficult for you to stop yourself from haram things. Sometimes wife become fitna for you. For example, your uh, income is low. Your wife will uh, demand you more money. Then you will earn money through illegal ways or maybe haram ways. For example, interest money is allowed throughout the world. But Islam does not allow it. So when you will have shortage of money, because of your wife, you may invest your money in a interest money to get more money, which is haram in Islam. So your wife has become fitna for you. Sometimes your children also become fitna for you. They make you neglectful. You earn haram money for them. In this case, the children will also become fitna for you. Now I will ask you, Ms. Hoor, Give me an example in which education can become fitna for you. Ali Sheri Ibrahim. Aisha Bibi. Oh. Yes, sir. When can education yes, become fitna for you? Uh, am I the one answering? Yes. Example, so, um, as you shared the example that if you are fasting and uh, a student uh, have exam um, uh, and not fasting because uh, he uh, wants to prepare for exam and uh, he thinks himself that it is hard to study um, by fasting. So um, at that time, um, it is uh, the education is good now. Okay, in, in that case, education can become fitna for you. Okay, next student we have Ummu Ahmad. Yes. Give me example in which job can become fitna for you. Um, the job maybe the working hours will pass the prayers time, so you just end up missing salah. Okay. Next student who. Ali Shahid Ibrahim. Okay, yeah, yeah. Education can be, no? 
give well, me an, give okay. me an example in which your parents can be comfort now for you oh okay when they they don't want you to they want you to study more in the western education and um, they don't want you to maybe grow beers or being too religious and um they they want you to follow all the western world and okay. Islam. okay good it can be fit now correct next student aisha bibi give me an example in which your husband and your children no your children can become fitna for you sir children yes or children can become fitna for us sir, children can become for us when we when they we start uh, one hour money to... to fulfill the needs of our children. In that case, children can become fitna for us. Okay. Next one, we have read the question. What is the fitna of Muslims? What is the biggest fitna? For Muslims, what is the biggest fitna for Muslims? So, in the answer, you will write according to Hadith 2336, the biggest fitna for Muslims is wealth. According to Hadith 2336, the biggest fitna. For Muslims is wealth. Basically, they will try to accumulate more wealth and more wealth. The more the wealth you will have, the more neglectful you will become in your religion. The less wealth you will have, the more religious you will become. Okay, next student, Muhammad. Yes. Repeat the question in the answer. What is the biggest fitna for Muslims? Yes. According to Hadith 2336, the biggest fitna for Muslim is wealth. Okay. Next. Two three three seven. Anas bin Malik narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If the son of Adam had a valley of gold, then he would still like to have a second. And nothing fills his mouth but dust. Allah turns to whoever repents." So Sahih. Nothing fulfills his mouth but dust. It means that when you bury the grave, when you bury a person in the grave. That definitely soil or dust will go into his mouth. So then his desires will finish. So this means as long as you are alive, your desires and your greed will never end. Only death will make you stop greeding and stop desiring. So that's why we see billionaire people. We see... People are dying because of hunger. People are committing suicide because of poverty. But billions are, billionaires are accumulating more and more wealth. They are never, it is useless money for them, but they are not giving it to poor people. So, only death will stop our greed. We will always desire for more and more and more. No need to add anything from it. Miss Hoor. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said the heart, the heart of an old man remains young because of love for two things, long life and much wealth. There is something on this topic for Anas from Anas this hadith 
Okay, so this study tells you you will always desire for long life and much wealth. Okay, so what does Hadith two three three eight means? What does Hadith two three three eight means? It means that you will always desire for long life and much wealth. You will always desire for long life and much wealth. Same thing is in the next this as well. Next to the Mr. Rishad Ibrahim. Nam. Repeat the question and the answer. What does Adis uh, two three three eight? What do, what does it mean? Hmm. It means we always you always. Want more life and uh, more wealth. Yes. Now read this one. Abu Dhar neither that the Prophet وسلم, said abstinence. Sorry, uh, abstinence in the world is not by prohibiting oneself the lawful. No, by neglecting the world. But abstinence in the world is that you, you not hold more firmly to what is in your hand than to what is in the hand of Allah. And that you be more hopeful of the rewards that come with an affliction that you may suffer if it remain with you. So many people make the mistake of this abstinence. They think that they will stop themselves from halal things. And this is abstinence. This is the wrong definition. Many Muslims also um, make this mistake. When they become religious, they start stopping themselves from halal things. Anything is halal, any money, any desire, or any other thing which is halal and you can do it, just do it. No need to stop yourself from it. If you like some food, eat it, but eat it little. If you want money, and money, nothing wrong in it. Just don't do anything haram. Okay, so abstention mean the best definition is in this hadith that you not hold more firmly to what is in your hand. Whatever Allah gives you, enjoy it. And what is not with you, what anything which you want and you don't have it, don't worry much about it, don't think about too much about it. It is in the hand of Allah. If Allah wants to give it to you, then Allah will give it to you. So, no need to think about those things which are in the hand of Allah. Your life is in the hand of Allah, your income is in the hand of Allah, your children, your age, such things are in the hand of Allah. So, no need to think much about them. Even your sickness is in the hand of Allah, so no need to think much about your future diseases. So enjoy whatever Allah has given it to you. We will not write anything in it. And when this hadith also tells us that whenever any problem comes to you, whenever you face any problem, any affliction, there will be a reward for you in the next line. So here we will write okay we will not write we will just tell you that whenever any problem any affliction come to you in this life and you remain patient on it and you don't complain to Allah Allah will reward you 
in next life or maybe in this life for that application. So we stop it and next time inshallah we'll continue. If any of you has any question, they can ask me. Uh, Sorry? On this ad yeah. uh, on this hadith we just finished. Yes. But what of um, what says that that is we should not um, underestimate or um or not thinking that Allah cannot do more for us. So this hadith is telling us to enjoy what Allah has given to us, but we can still think of more. Yes, we can think of more. We can try to get more. Nothing wrong in it. Okay. All right. So only thing is that that we don't make much complaint and we don't worry much about it. For example, let's suppose my income is hundred dollars per month. Okay. And suddenly I see my children growing up and I feel that after few years I need to earn two hundred dollars per month. So this is a thing which is for future. I should not worry much about it. I will uh, I will work more hard. I will do more effort, but I will not think much about that future. How will I uh, pay the school fees of children and stuff like this? I should not think much about it. I will just work hard. If I get money, good. If I fail in my effort of earning more money, don't become sad. Okay. Yes, I'm not going Anyone else? Me. See you all next time, inshallah. Amen.